In this video, we will be covering RX Studio. We'll walk through the many features it offers and give examples on how to use them. RX Studio is a real-time receiver data monitoring and collection software platform. It features a plug-and-play style architecture compatible with over 100 GNSS receivers. We'll begin this video with connecting to a receiver in RX Studio. To connect a receiver, you must first identify the type of receiver you want to connect to. Start by clicking on the arrow in the top left hand corner of the window to reveal a drop down box of available choices. As you can see, RX Studio offers a wide variety of receiver models. You can scroll down and choose the receiver you are trying to connect to, or alternatively, you can begin typing the name of the receiver to filter the list. If your specific receiver is not listed, consider the message format it uses. RX Studio offers many generic choices for common message formats such as NMEA, ICD-153, MSID, and many others. For this video, we will be connecting to a U-Blox receiver. Once we've chosen the receiver model, we need to select the COM port or IP address associated with that receiver. To do this, we click on the arrow next to the green button to reveal a drop-down box of all available COM ports. Choose the COM port associated with the receiver that you are trying to connect to, and then click on the green Connect Receiver button. Under controller status, you should see port opened, and then the nav data frame will start populating with data. This is an indication of a successful connection. To disconnect your receiver, click on the red Disconnect Receiver button. If you are connecting to your receiver using Ethernet, you will see an option in the drop-down box to enter IP address. This will generate a pop-up window that lets you enter the IP address of your receiver. For this example, we're going to stick to a U-Blocks receiver connected through a COM port. If a COM port is not shown for your desired receiver, ensure all necessary cables are connected and your drivers are up to date. If you are connecting to your receiver via Ethernet and you don't see the Enter IP Address option, make sure you have chosen the correct receiver model. Some receivers have multiple entries depending on the method you are using to communicate. Now that we have successfully connected to our receiver, we will begin to see data populating within the nav data frame. This is where you will see key position, navigation, and time data metrics such as lat long altitude, number of satellites used, and clock drift. Looking to the bottom half of the window, we can see columns of data representing individual satellite vehicle information such as carrier to noise ratio, track state of used or not used, pseudo range residuals, Doppler, and other signal information. These columns can be sorted from ascending to descending by clicking on the column title. You will see several tabs listed next to the nav data frame. Let's take a look at nav data plots first. On this tab, we can see a map of the globe with your receiver's position overlaid. This map will only populate if your host computer is connected to the internet or if you have a local map server, which can be purchased through TalonX. Also on this tab, we can see plots of your receiver's altitude, NED velocity, clock bias, and clock drift over time. Finally, we have a sky map. This shows all of the satellite vehicles that your receiver is currently tracking and their relative positions in the sky. The next tab we will take a look at is the SV Books tab. This shows all of the downlink information observed by your receiver for each constellation. You can click on a specific subframe and page number to view the information contained within. For example, if I wanted to look at the eccentricity for subframe 2 on page 20, I would click here and look on the right at the table of values to obtain the information. One thing to note is that not all receivers output this information, meaning that this tab will not be populated for those receivers. Next up is the Almanax tab. This tab shows the current almanac information for every satellite in the GPS constellation. This tab will update when a new almanac data set is received. The ephemeris tab is broken down into subframe 1, which gives clock status information of the satellites, and subframes 2 and 3, which list orbital parameters. This table will also be updated as new ephemeris data is received. Like the SV Books tab, some receivers do not output the data to support the Almanac and Ephemeris tabs, meaning that for some receivers, these tables will not be populated. 
The final tab we have is the debug tab. The debug tab shows all of the low-level information pulled from the receiver into RX Studio. This can be useful when you are having trouble configuring a receiver or if you are looking for a specific message from a receiver. It allows you to view a stream of messages coming from the receiver in raw hex format or after it has been decoded. Now that we've gone through all of the data tabs, we can move on to some of the other features that RX Studio provides, one being the ability to send commands to receivers. These commands include cold, warm, and hot starts, setting a specified receiver time and position, and writing a custom message in hex format. For users using military receivers, RX Studio also provides the ability to key and zeroize your receiver. Not all receivers support receiver commands. Unsupported commands will be grayed out, like the zeroize command is for this receiver. The ability to see data and send commands in real time has many advantages, but many users require a data log for post-processing. RX Studio provides just that. Clicking on the screen folder will open up the file directory where all of your logs from the current session are stored. These logs are in a human-readable CSV format. This makes it easy to pull values from specific timestamps that may correlate to an event that took place while your receiver was connected. RX Studio also records the raw binary data from the receiver's output. This leads into the next feature, which is Record and Replay. In the Comport drop-down list, you will see an option called From File. Choosing this and clicking on the green Connect button will open up a file explorer, from which you can choose a bin file. When we open the bin file, RX Studio will start to replay the session. You can pause the session, play it, fast forward it, or use the blue slider to back up or skip forward in the session. When a session has come to a close, you can replay it by simply clicking on the green connect button. If you want additional information about a supported receiver, click on the question mark in the top right hand corner of the window. This will generate a pop-up that has all of the recipe cards that we've created. Recipe cards will give you important configuration information, as well as tell you what RX Studio features are supported and not supported. One last feature to cover is this orange button. This is our Panorama Link button. When you have the Panorama application open and click on this button, it will pull up your current session in Panorama. Panorama itself has a wide variety of features and benefits to help bolster your PNT capabilities, but we will cover that in another video. That brings our video on RX Studio to an end. Thank you for watching. For more information on our products and how to contact us, please click on the link in the video description to visit our website at talon-x.com.